Hey everybody, it's been a while, so I thought we were due for a video. And today I wanted to talk about a little adventure I went on uh, to one of the local museums here in Kumamoto. And uh, this is the museum that's right by Kumamoto Castle, uh, actually kind of on the castle grounds more or less. And uh, they sometimes have some very cool exhibits there. Uh, today was one of those days, and they had an exhibit on the art of a fellow by the name of Leiji Matsumoto. Uh, Leiji is a guy who's actually, he's actually from around this area. He, he's apparently from like Kurume, where I went to saw, see the giant Buddha statue several months ago. Um, and he's created several series that are just super famous here in Japan. And, uh, well, let me give you an idea here. I bought some goodies there at the thing, and they gave me this bag, which uh, you can see the logos of some of his series. And here on the opposite side, you can see some of his most famous characters. Uh, uh, so you got like uh, Captain Harlock, Maytel, uh, Queen Emeraldus, and one of the uh, characters from uh, Space Battleship Yamato. And if some of these characters maybe look a little familiar to you, uh, quite a few of his works have been uh, translated into English and brought to America. Uh, the most well-known of his things in the U.S. is probably a series called, debatably, it's going to be either a series called Galaxy Express 999, which uh, back when I was around college was like an absolute staple of the sci-fi channel on like Friday and Saturday nights, they would show some anime movie, usually about like one of the same handful of anime movies again and again. Uh, and Nine Galaxy Express 999 was one of the ones that they did. Uh, it was made in 1981. They did some later animations with it in I think the 80s, like 1989. Uh, but anyway, it was basically one of the first animated Japanese movies that was ended up on American TV and was a lot of people's introduction to animation from Japan. And uh, that's the series where they introduced a character by the name of Maytel. And Maytel is this uh, blonde lady here. And again, like I said, a lot of the stuff that this Leiji Yamasuo created is really well known in Japan. Everybody knows it. And Maytel is one of those characters that basically, like the series was created in 1977. Um, and since then, she's really just been an absolute icon of a character here in Japan. I have literally remember walking down the street one time, I think it was in Sapporo of all places, and there was this mural with her painted on the side of a building here. Uh, you know, for people who are into things like that, uh, you know, she's a perennial favorite uh, for people who like to dress up in costumes. And it, I mean, it's really just hard to describe that. It's just like this is a character that has been known and loved by people for for longer than I've been alive. So for more than 40 years. Uh, and again, it's one of the things that even people who really aren't into things like that will at least recognize the character. Um, the thing that I think maybe who people might have heard of that uh, he created, that's probably the most well known in America, would be, uh, well, in Japan it's called uh, basically Space Battleship Yamato. Uh, but when they brought it to America, it was reworked because uh, it was a lot of stuff in there wasn't exactly suitable for American audiences for various reasons. Uh, but it was retitled Star Blazers in, J in America. And people who know their old school animation are pretty familiar with that. And like I said, Matsumoto did other things like um, Captain Harlock is another one that he uh, did, Queen Emeraldus, uh, and, and he did other things too. Uh, one other thing that I did happen to pick up while I was there was uh, a Captain Harlock t shirt. Um, for some reason, he, they choose to they chose to use uh, Herlock as the name. I've seen that done some other times. I think it's just a little bit of a disagreement between uh, the Japanese license, whoever owns the rights in Japan and whoever uh, has the rights overseas. But in America, he's called Harlock. Uh, I guess probably they imagine it rolls off the tongue a little bit better in English. Uh, but he actually had a CGI movie made uh, a couple of years back, which I've seen, and it's not bad. It's not great either, but it's not terrible by any measure. And um, at the end of the day, uh, like I said, a lot of the stuff this guy's created has just been iconic in Japan for literally decades. 
Um, he also, and there's this like area of the exhibit where you can kind of learn about his life and things like that. Uh, he was apparently an assistant to a fellow by the name of uh, Osamu Tezuka, and people who are who know like Japanese manga and anime will recognize that guy as one of the most legendary creators in like Japanese history in that front. Uh, people have kind of called him the Walt Disney of Japan, which I think is a little bit of an exaggeration, but to give you an idea of this, um, Osamu Tezuka is the guy that created Astro Boy, and he did a lot of other stuff that is also incredibly well known in Japan, and it has a decent following in other countries. Uh, Kimba the White Lion, uh, Blackjack, uh, Phoenix is another series he did. Uh, so, yeah, Leiji Hat Matsumoto has quite uh, the impressive resume, and um, we also got to see some art from some other things that he did that are not as well known. Uh, apparently he experimented with some rather, uh, I guess by the standards of the time, some saucy stuff. Uh, back in like the 1968, he created something called Sexeroid, and there was another um, sort of uh, looking thing that he did around the 1970s called... Um, the Great Insect. Uh, again, by modern standards, it's really basically nothing, but it would have been probably considered a little on the saucy side for the time. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, it's interesting to sort of see that uh, creators will sometimes go out there and uh, dabble in things very far from what we traditionally think of their field. Um, one, and I, I have to uh, be clear that you really, except for a few areas, you weren't allowed to take pictures at this exhibit. Uh, in Japanese museums are, are generally really, really twitchy about people taking photos, uh, by and large. They'll, if there's something, they'll have a little sign up that'll say, yes, okay, you can take pictures of this, but everything else you can't really take pictures of. Um, so I took a, grabbed a few pictures of some uh, interesting things there. Um, What's really, but the best moment of it all was um, just a few minutes after I'd gotten into the exhibit, I was walking around looking at some of like the original storyboards for the original Galaxy Express 999 comics manga. And I happened to turn around and there's this lady dressed as Maytel walking past me. And just for a moment, I'm like, just shocked. I'm like, oh my God, it has as all these years of geeky geeky goodness finally caught up with me and I'm literally hallucinating a character right in front of me and then I'm like oh no it's just some lady in a costume and I, I later uh, when I went to basically to the gift shop she was there to kind of hang out so that people could like take pictures and stuff like that so she was basically an employee who was just had to wear the costume as part of her job I thought she was just like some really diehard fan at first who had decided to come to the museum exhibit in the costume, which in Japan would not be something that's that out, uh, out of left field. Uh, people have done far crazier things. Um, but yeah, I really did wonder if I, for just for a moment there, if I had started to lose touch with reality. Um, yeah. And um, let's see. Uh, it was, uh, definitely was a really great, uh, great way to spend a couple of hours. I'm not the biggest, uh, Leiji Matsumoto fan in the world, but the man is undoubtedly extremely influential. He's created stuff that is basically, you know, household name stuff here in Japan, stuff that even people who aren't into nerdy stuff will know and recognize. And again, he's been doing this since at least the 1960s. And, um... Well, no, if you saw other things that he did, like, even earlier, but he's been really famous since, the like, the later part of the 70s. And to kind of give you an idea, they were also selling, like, original, like, drawings and paintings that he had done at this exhibit. One of them, and I swear, I, I, had, I looked at this again and again to make sure my eyes weren't playing tricks on me. One of them was going for what would basically be $19,000. The majority of the stuff that they were selling was like between fifteen hundred and twenty five hundred bucks, up a, a piece, but that's that's nothing to sniff at either, and there are people here who will buy that stuff. I mean, imagine if some of the like really legendary American comic book artists like 
you know, Jack Kirby or Steve Ditko or Frank Franzetta, and you can buy some of their original art, that's going to go for some serious, serious money. So getting to see like original things drawn by this guy way back before I was born. And if you actually look at these things, you can kind of even see moments where like where the colors bleed over a little bit or where somebody pressed a little too hard with a marker while coloring in something black. Um, there's even like a little note I, in Japanese at the bottom of one of the pictures uh, for some of the art for Galaxy Express 999. And it talked about like NASA and uh, the North American Space Defense Agency. And what I think it was talking about was like he'd actually done, a, Matsumoto had done some homework um, using sort resources from them about, you know, what, what it actually looked like out in space. And keep in mind, like in the late 70s, when this was coming out, like, uh, like stuff from like Viking and Voyager were just starting to kind of get known in, uh, around the world. So he was actually kind of using the most scientifically up-to-date information at the time, at least if my admittedly rather shaky understanding of Japanese is correct in this situation. Uh, but yeah, guys, this was definitely a, a fun way to spend the afternoon. And I had, uh, had a pretty nice time. Picked up a few fun little souvenirs. So uh, yeah, time well spent. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to call it here. And until next time. Thanks for taking the time to listen. See ya.